Hello everyone. Today we're going to be looking at a velocity banking case study using a home equity line of credit in the second position. And we're in the state of Florida while practicing this concept. So I got a real life case study in the state of Florida. We're looking at a bank in Florida called Partners Federal Credit Union. So if you're in the state of Florida, I believe this is North Florida area. So where you can potentially look for this type of bank that offers this type of a tool, okay? If you're in the process of obtaining your debt tool, personal line of credit, home equity line of credit, first lien, second lien, maybe a credit card, you're gonna wanna start looking in your local area, local banks, credit unions, uh, federal credit unions, nationwide banks, and then expand your search outside of the state that you're currently in. Ideally, you're probably gonna find better deals, better rates, better terms when you deal with the smaller banks as it relates to this specific banking product, right? A home equity line of credit, personal line of credit for the purpose of practicing the velocity banking concept, right? So that's what this person did here on the board. So let's go ahead and direct our attention to the whiteboard here. Starting with the four major numbers, we have income 16,891.54. That is consistent monthly income coming in for this particular individual here. Their expenses are $12,533.18, okay? Total debt, $1,116,279.73. That is made up of a mortgage, home equity debt, so there's already existing debt on our debt tool, uh, and a vehicle. So three separate debts, vehicle, car, uh, car loan, home equity debt, and mortgage itself, right? So that's what we're dealing with. Their cash flow at the end of the month is around this number, $4,358.36, right? Here's our debt tool. We have a home equity line of credit in the second position on their primary residence. 300,000 is the credit limit. 9% is the interest rate. You might be thinking, dang, that's a pretty high rate. But again, in this environment, I'm going to be producing more and more content showing you how to do this concept of velocity banking, even with high interest rates, right? Many of you may be asking the question, does this still make sense to practice a velocity banking concept when my HELOC went from a 5% rate and it jumped all the way up to a 9%? Okay, in many cases, Yes, it will still make sense. In some cases, it will not, right? And we need to know how to identify that. Best way is to actually know what your net borrowing cost is in a month. And then you can take that number and then you can average it out over the year and see what that number comes out to. But in reality, that first month of doing velocity banking is always your most expensive month. Every month thereafter, that number is dropping. And I'm going to show you that here. So if you were to add up those all those numbers and you look at, okay, in six months, here's how much interest I paid. You compare that to your rate and you're going to notice a drastic difference. So in this case, even at a 9% interest rate, we're going to be cutting that rate nearly in half. So in an environment today, 2023, where interest rates are really high, prime is at 8%, federal funds rate, I think is 4.75. And that number could be increasing throughout the year when, infl when inflation is being manipulated, when it's actually around say 14, 15 plus percent, right? And you're being told a different story, but you're seeing it in your eggs, your beef, your food, gas, everything, right? <laughs> that you could be borrowing at less than 4%, 3%, 2%, 5%, right? That's incredible in terms of how you can leverage debt to pay off your other high interest debt where you are getting charged 9%, 12%, 15%, 25%, and you're consolidating all that into a 4% environment, 3% environment, 5% environment, right? And then still remaining liquid and be able to access those funds. That's extremely important here. And that's what this client observed. And now they're implementing. So in addition to their four major numbers, right, of what's coming in, what's coming out, cash flow and debt, they also have an annual lump sum income that comes in from an annuity, I believe, and it is $51,894. That gets paid out once a year, every single year, right? So 51894 I did not add that into this number, right? So I've just separated it on purpose. And then every three years, they receive $50,000, okay? So there's gonna be one year every three years where they get the 50, the 51,000, and then 16,891.54 times 12 right? So that's going to be a, a bigger year for them in terms of income, right? And then every other, every year outside of every three years, they're getting the 51,894 and then that 16,891.54 times 12, okay? Just want to be clear on that. 
their goal, pay off debt, right? When I have only had one conversation so far with this client and we're going to be building main goal, Denzel, I want to pay off debt. That's it, right? That's all we got so far. So I'm solving for that in the most efficient way possible, right? We were looking at that snowball, looking at making extra payments. And then we, we use that as our measurement stick when doing the velocity banking concept to see, okay, am I going faster, right? Will this propel me forward? Let's go ahead and prove that. So looking at our rules here of leverage, if I got a $300,000 credit line, I don't want to use the whole 300 grand, right? That wouldn't be smart. I want to use a portion of that, okay? So upon obtaining the home equity line, the bank themselves told the my client that they have to pay off a certain amount of debt. So prior to talking to me, they had a bunch of other debts, 113,852.48 worth of debt, right? So the bank already kind of started Velocity Banking for us. Now we actually have to implement it, right? So I explain to the client, this is what I normally do. I take that credit limit, I times it by 66%, you're gonna get 198,000. I look at that number as my actual credit limit. I don't wanna go above this number because once I reach 198, I'm gonna feel like I'm over leveraging myself, right? Putting myself in a not so good position especially in 2023 today, now is the time to conserve, be aware of vulnerabilities in your finances. Now is not the time to splurge. Now is not the time to over leverage yourself in an investment in hopes of a rate of return. Okay. Now's not the time to be thinking that way. Now's the time to be thinking, okay, what do I actually have versus what my leverage is? What is my leverage capacity and defining what that number is and staying disciplined. So we're defining what our leverage capacity is. We have a $300,000 line of credit. Doesn't mean I should use the whole 300K, right? So when doing velocity banking, this is key because that's what's gonna help us actually avoid paying upwards of 9% in interest by not using the whole thing, using it in chunks, small chunks. So 198 is our max. The next thing I do is I take cash flow times that number by 12, you should get $52,300.32. Anywhere between 52,000 and 198 is what we should be using to accelerate this $1.1 million debt, right? To pay that off. Now, the bank already did it for us. So we now owe 113,852.48. So debt has already been paid off. Now we're going to be doing velocity banking on the debt tool itself. We're going to bring that credit limit down to a certain point where we feel comfortable, and then we'll attack the next debt. Out of the three different debts, the next debt that we would attack is a vehicle, okay? They have a, a vehicle right now. The balance is like 50,000 and some change. The month, I have it right over here. Uh, the interest rate is 8.49%. Monthly payment is 901.97. Okay, so we're gonna do velocity banking first on what the bank had us eliminate in debt. We now have to pay down that 113 before we jump to the next debt, right? Now, if you're thinking in your head, okay, well, why not take the 113 Denzel and add the 50 that he owes in there and that, that wouldn't breach above 198. No, it wouldn't. But when you compare a person's cash flow times 12, eh, I, I don't really like that gap. It's a really, really large gap in interest cost, right? We really wanna keep that interest cost down as, as much as possible, right? So it may not be the right timing. And here's some of the things that I look at, especially when I'm dealing with people who are just starting this out for the first time, I'm considering things that you may not even be considering. For example, it's 2023, it's a volatile market. Inflation's on the rise, hyperinflation, right? They're not saying it, but we're there. It's hyperinflation, okay? Um, recession is here, they're not saying it. We're in a recession. Uh, hundreds of thousands of people are losing their jobs, like day in and day out, it's happening. Major corporations are dropping thousands of employees. Thousands of people are, are losing their jobs. So I'm, thinking about those things. I'm thinking about, okay, SVV bank collapse, signature bank collapse. Looks like Credit Suisse is having issues. Looks like this bank is having issues. Like, okay, banks are collapsing, you know, countries divided. We have a lot of different things going on that can affect your finances that you may not be paying attention to as your coach. I'm paying attention to those things. I'm thinking of the things that you're not thinking of and saying, hey, you know, yeah, we could stuff a bunch of debt in this HELOC, but what happens in the event the bank closes our debt tool, locks us up, uh, that bank goes under and then it, that debt then gets transfers to a new bank and maybe they'll create different terms. We need to be aware of these different things. So by not over leveraging, 
even though I created the parameter, doesn't mean I have to go anywhere near that number, right? I really don't want to go anywhere near 198,000 owed, you know, on this debt tool in this, in this person's finances, right? Don't want to do it. And if you're brand new, you probably don't want to do it either. If you're more advanced, more seasoned, you're an expert, you know what's going on, you've evaluated everything, you ran all the numbers, I'm not going to argue with you, right? I'm focusing on people who are, you know, doing this for the first time, they're a couple months in, maybe a year in. I would consider you an expert once you've been practicing this for two, three, four, five years, right? When you've got a lot of years under your belt of leveraging, paying off, paying off, leveraging, leveraging, paying off, offsetting interest, that kind of thing. So let's break down the home equity line of credit itself. 113,852.48 owed. The monthly payment is $1,138.53. I included that number in the expense, okay? But technically only $11,394.65 is gonna be coming out of the HELOC, right? Because the payment of 1,138.53, that's going into the HELOC. So when we're dumping all our income into the debt tool, our payment is already getting satisfied, right? When we do that. So what's actually coming out of the HELOC is the other expenses, the other debt payments that this person has or that you have, okay? So when you break down this monthly payment, this is a principal and interest payment. The interest only of the 1138.53 is $853.89. Times that by 12, this is the total amount of interest, the max amount of interest that I will pay in a year on 113,000 if all I did was just pay the interest. That's not what that is not what's happening here, right? Just looking at the monthly payment alone out of the 1138, $284.64 is going towards principal. So that would mean that the following month, we're not going to pay $853.89 in interest. It's going to be a couple bucks less, okay? And that's going to keep dropping little by little, just like an amortization debt would, right? Very similar. In this case, we're able to speed that up much faster by dumping our entire income into the line, parking it there for a period of time, and then only extracting what we need when we need it to pay bills, right? So I laid that out. Very important, pay attention to these numbers. Do this for your own debt tool if you have one in place. Write all this down, separate it so you can see exactly what we're working with, right? So here's what I did and I, little by little, you're gonna notice some differences in the expense numbers. You might get a little confused. I did it, I did one element each at a time and built upon it, but technically what's happening is all of the elements are coming together and helping you. So all of my numbers here are going to be intentionally incorrect, more than likely. I'm creating a buffer, room for error in the event something happens, right? Unexpected expenses, maybe they don't cash flow the 4,000. So I'm creating that room for error. But one by one, I'm gonna be adding things where you can actually see the difference, the gaps in actual interest costs on a month to month basis. So you can see what actually goes down. So here we go, 113 what I initially owe. The way this person gets paid two times a month, we have a social security paycheck that comes in one time a month. Then we have another paycheck that comes in one time a month. The social security paycheck is like under 3000 bucks, right? And then the other check is like 14,000. So two times a month, money is going into the line. Two times a month, money goes in, parks. And then maybe five, six times a month, money's coming out to pay bills. So what I'm illustrating here is just taking the 113 minusing 16,891.54, you're gonna get a number, right? Whatever that number is, you times it by 9%, divided by 365, you're gonna get a number, okay? Here's what I did. I took 113, times it by 9%, divide by 365, get a number, minus income, add expenses. Now notice how I am illustrating that $12,533.18 is coming out of the line. That's not the case. So when you take that and you minus principal, it's really 12,248.54. But even that's not the case. That's that's not coming out of the line of credit, right? This is the number, 113.94.65. That's what's actually coming out of the line. And then the 1,138.53, the breakdown, right? We have 28464 principal. So we know principal is what's actually paying down this balance. The rest is going towards interest. So when you're running your numbers, be aware of that. Now, I intentionally um, create that, that big gap 
that big error. And then I show the numbers and I say, look, this is what should happen, right? So if you're a financial coach or you're working to become one, I would recommend for you to create that error, that intentional error by showing that payment coming out of the tool and seeing what the interest cost is. And you can even compare that result to debt snowball. And if you still come out on top, then you can say, hey, look, the reality is I illustrated X coming out of the HELOC. That's not what that's not what's happening. What's actually happening is this number is coming out and the rest is staying in principle. So your interest cost is going to be even less than whatever I illustrate here. You want to make that abundantly clear to your client. For the purpose of this video, I'm showing what what really is happening. This is more of an accurate view of what's going to happen. So when income goes in, expenses come out, you're going to get around this number, 109,209.48. So you times that number by 9%, this number by 9%, and you times minus income times that number by 9%, which just means the highest balance, the lowest balance, the ending balance, okay? Divide by 365 each time, you're going to get a daily borrowing cost rate, right? You then add those three numbers up together, you divide by three to get the median cost, the average daily borrowing cost. Times it by 30 days, you should get around this number. So we went from $853.89 to now paying $789.60. That is a $64.29 difference, estimated, okay? Underestimated, the number will actually be much higher, okay? So that is technically, that's more what cash flow? That's cash flow coming back into the HELOC, sitting in there from that payment. More of that 1138.53 is now principal. So $64.29. This $58.59 is assuming that the client has bills. Okay, we ran the numbers. You got $3,906.23 of bills that we can run through a credit card. And I wrote about 1.5% cash back rewards. Could be higher, could be two, could be 2.5, could be three. Underestimated, getting about 60 bucks, okay? $58.59. That $58.59 never leaves the HELOC. So you could technically say 12,533.18 was his expenses minus the 1138.53, which is the monthly payment that never left the HELOC. So it's really 11,394.65. And then you can minus 58 bucks from that number and say that is what's actually coming out of the HELOC. That's what's actually coming out, right? Because we're gonna claim that cashback rewards on the credit card before the credit cards even do. So on the due date, we're gonna apply that to the balance. So it brings the balance down, which means when the credit cards do, I pull out 3,900 bucks or 3,800 some change, pay the credit card off in full, right? Avoid interest. So we're always paying the statement balance. The statement balance might be a little bit different from what's actually owed. But as long as you pay the statement balance, you pay no interest. So that also means, check this out. That also means that this 390623 from this expense number, that means this 3906 stood in the line of credit for an even for an even longer period of time. And we only have to pull it out in one shot 20, 25 days later after swiping the expense pull it 20, 25 days later out of the HELOC, pays the bill, rinse, lather, repeat. So again, that's bringing your interest cost down even more. So we got 64.29 plus 58.59, got $122.88 cash flow gain, which means 122 less in interest paid from that in our debt tool. And I'm saying 789.60 is what he'll pay. I'm telling you that number is gonna be less. It's gonna be much less, All right? So now check this out. We're in April. 2023. I'm illustrating month ahead in May as I'm record I'm recording this video in April, but in May I'm showing what the numbers should look like. So I'm not even including cash flow for April. And that again, these are just really cool techniques to use as a as a coach perspective. So talking to my coaches out there, my consultants, velocity banking practitioners that are trying to help your family and friends and clients, right? Coworkers, whatever it may be, creating all that buffer really allows your client to to see the vast opportunity that's that's here. And you can say, look, conservatively, look how much faster you're going. When in reality, you're probably gonna be going like a month, two, three months faster than what I'm saying, right? So it's just really cool there to, to keep in mind. So now the following month is June. After May comes June. In June is when I'm getting this payout. 
of 51,894 comes every year, same time in June. So every year in June, this person receives 51,894. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna park that money right in the HELOC, drastically reduce it. So I did 109, 209, 48, and then add this number, right? Once you add that number up, then minus income, then minus lump sum, you should get this number, 41,213.54. Again, take that number times by 9%. Take this number times by 9%. Divide by 365 and get your daily costs. Now, here's how I wrote the expense number to accommodate, right? So I see, I see how I'm slowly adding the elements here slowly adding it. So I'm saying 12,184.25 minus cashback rewards. So what I did was I minus 284.64 from this number, right? You should get that number. Then I minus $64.29 from that number. 12,248.54, you get this, 12,184.25. Then I'm saying minus, again, 58.59. Once you get that number, add that to the 41, you should be here. 53,397.79. Look where the interest costs dropped. So we went from 789.60 to 504.46, right? So that's now $285.14, okay? Additional principal paying down the balance of that, that tool, right? Add your cashback rewards, right? Which was mentioned right here. So end of June, I should be around here. 53,397.79 plus that number, right? And then we can decide, okay, went from 113 all the way down to 53 because of that lump sum and doing velocity banking. Hmm, I might be tempted to pay off the car now. And I would say, yeah, you could totally do that. But in this case, since we're brand new, we're only two months in of doing velocity banking, I'm, I'm you know, talking to the client, hey, you know, we, we could get our feet wet by simply practicing the concept a couple more months to get really comfortable, money going in, money coming out, money going in, money coming out, right? Creating that velocity of money flow. I'm illustrating making that chunk in July, three months later from our start date, May, June, July. You could wait a little longer, it's fine, but we really shouldn't wait too long. I right? shouldn't really shouldn't wait too long because the, the debt that we have, the 8.49 on this vehicle, which is around 50, which will be around 50,000 owed in, in July, we're at the top of that debt that amortization schedule. We're at the top of it. Just got the car. Just started financing it. Just started making payments in uh, April, May of 23. We just started. So the most amount of interest is to be saved up front. So we don't want to wait too long. But again, getting our feet wet. We're not in trouble whether we wait a couple more months, do it in June, do it in July. Not a huge deal. If we did it in July, we go right back to somewhere around what we were owing, right? So let's just say we waited an additional month, right? So income goes in, brings the balance down, expenses come out. Notice how I'm, see how I'm adding the different elements little by little, add the cash back rewards. I'm adding the, the principal addition each time, bringing the number down, right? Minusing that principal, 11,840.52. Again, that's still not true. It's still technically not true. Right. What's actually coming out of the tool is the 11,394.65 of actual expenses. Right. The interest is what is going to bring that number up. Whatever that difference is, is going to result in a number around here. But again, that interest didn't go somewhere else. It just came from the available equity in the tool itself. So that's where they would charge the interest from, from the tool itself. Right. So that's pretty cool. Um, some banks may not do that. Some banks still require you to, you know, make a payment. And if that's the case, even after dumping all your income in, if the bank still doesn't register your income as the payment, which I have not had that situation yet where a bank doesn't recognize the payment. So understand that for the most part here, from my knowledge, from what I'm aware of, working with thousands of people at this point, hundreds of different scenarios. Anytime you deposit, make a payment into your debt tool that is registering as a payment, you may be given the option where it says make additional principal payment or make monthly payment of say 1,138.53. So if you made an additional principal payment on the due date, you're still going to owe that monthly payment. You can talk to the bank and you can ask them, hey, on the due date, are you able to just pull the interest owed from the equity balance? Or is that going to get pulled from my checking account, right? If they say, 
we can pull it from the home equity line of credit itself to pay the bill, then that's fine. You're good. If they say no, it has to payment has to be made from your checking account, then all you would be doing is since all your income already went in the line, follow me, all your income already went in the line. So you're like, my checking account's at zero. How am I going to pay that interest on the due date? You just move the money out of the HELOC and then have it go right back in, pays the interest. Does that make sense? So if we're approaching the due date, say it's the fifth of the month and your HELOC's due and you owe 500 bucks in interest, right? But you've already made all your principal payments in advance. So now all you owe is the interest and they're not going to pull it from the equity. Then you would just literally withdraw $500 out of your HELOC and it pays the interest to the bank, right? Because we've already calculated for that, right? In our expenses, we already accounted for it. The difference is that that principal gap from what the original payment was. So in this case, the original payment is a is 1,138.53. And I'm illustrating each and every month that 1,138.53 is, is like an expense to something else. That's not the case. That's why I'm you know, saying, look, in reality, we, you have more money staying in the line than you realize when you're doing this. And I'm just breaking down the different elements, cashback rewards, principal difference, right? Uh, cash flow recovery from month to month. And we can see that that large gap that occurs, right? So come back. We're in June, end of June. Money went in. Expenses came out, right? I'm showing $344.50 that following month, total interest costs, okay? This is July now, right? This was June, now July. So in June, we pay 504 roughly in interest. In July, we're at 344.50 in interest, okay? Oh no, I'm sorry, May, June, July. Yeah, let's not get confused. Three months so far of doing velocity banking. Add those numbers up, see what you get, and you could divide that by four, right? You can, you could divide it by four and you'll be able to get a, you're going to know that you're paying a lower rate than 9% because we're at 10,246.72 over here, right? So let's just say that remained true. These three different costs were consistent throughout the whole year, plus 504 and then plus 344.50 50 times four. That's, so we went from 10 down to six, right? So uh, 113,852 times 5%. So we went from nine to probably we're around 6% in, in interest costs. Assuming this these numbers stay, which is not the case because the balance is continually coming down. So we're gonna be somewhere in the neighborhood around less than 4% when you really think about it. Pretty powerful. So coming back, we're in July right here, 48,000 plus 344, we're at 49,000 owed on the line plenty of space to make our next chunk right 198 being the max now if we look at cash flow times 12 okay we got the original number 4358 36 plus 901 that payment times that by 12 we're at 63 12396 and then you add the interest from that monthly payment right uh i'm sorry you add the principal from the monthly payment that brings that number up so we can make a educated and informed decision, pay off the car. We move 8.49 amortized to 9% simple interest. Yes, that's a higher number, 8.49 to nine, but then nine becomes less than five in interest. And you get the cash flow today. That cash flow sits in the HELOC, goes even further. So let's run that, let's see. And this is where I kind of stopped it because I want, I want you to see me do the math, right? This is pen and paper that you can do with me. 49,195.73 is what I'm saying the balance is at. Add the payoff amount, which is what we're going to chunk, 50,069.75 cent. Now we're at 99,265.48 owed, right? So we made the chunk. We're at 99. This is the highest balance now that we'll owe. So times it by 9% and then divide by 365. What do you get? Times 9, divide by 365, $24.47 a day. Is your borrowing costs okay now do velocity banking minus income so 99,265.48 minus person's income 16,891.54 where it goes down to 82,373.94 cent do it again times nine percent divide by 365 now you're at $20 and 31 cents a day okay watch this now expenses Let's try to get an accurate prediction on what our expense is going to be. So we're originally at 1253318 minus 901. 
97 minus that original number of 284 because we know for sure out of 1138 284 is going to principal so that's our cash flow that doesn't leave the heloc so we're at 11,034657. and again that's still overestimation here we're getting more principal back and we'll see what that difference is when we evaluate the interest cost right so let's write that expenses are now moving forward 11,346.57, right? So 82,373.94 plus expenses coming out of the tool, 11,346.57. We end up at around 93,720.51 cents times that number by 9%. That's $23.10. So now what do you do? 2310 plus $20.31 plus $24.47. Take that number, $67.88, divide by three. Average daily borrowing cost in the month of July is roughly $22.62. Uh, Times that by 30 days, what do you get? 678 bucks and 89 cents, which means from 853, 853.89 minus 678.89 is a $175 difference there in cost. So it's the 175 plus your 284.64. So from the 1138.53 monthly payment, instead of $853 going to interest, only 678.89 went to interest. So you got 175 plus 284. 64 you now have 459 dollars 64 cents going to principal from that monthly payment plus your original cash flow of 4358.36 plus 901.97 100 percent of that number is paying down the balance of your heloc that's why we're moving so much faster than just making extra payments at the end of the month because you canceled the interest from accruing in the first place. You prevented it. When you wait, that daily interest is compounding for however long you owe that money for, right? And mind you, this number is, is false. All this is not correct, right? But it's in our favor still, because we're gonna do better than this. Why, Denzel? Well, the way I got the math, I'm, I'm assuming that we're owing 49,195.73 for, uh, I'm sorry, 99,265.48. I'm assuming we owe that for 10 days. I'm assuming we owe 82,000 for 10 days. I'm assuming we owe 93,000 for 10 days. That's not the case. That's not what's happening, right? That's not what's happening at all. And then again, factor in cash pack rewards. That means even less money coming out, right? So technically that 11,346.57 minus $58 and 59 cents technically only 11,287.98 is coming out right phenomenal phenomenal so that's how we're constantly doing our math here i know it can be complicated so the the easiest way to do it is just taking whatever the original balance is times it by the interest rate divided by 365 then minus income see what that number goes down to times that number by nine percent divided by 365 and then add expenses including your monthly payment so you're you're, you're putting yourself in a in a worse position to prove whether velocity banking makes sense or not and if you line up that snowball and you're still beating that snowball you're understand you're going even faster when you actually implement the concept you're going that much faster so powerful stuff here phenomenal case study really excited for the results for this person they're gonna be able to pay off their car the same year we're working together in 2023 that HELOCs and get paid way down once the HELOC is paid off right which could take us say six uh about nine months so we're in july so august september october november december january february march april by the ninth month that balance is way down right and then knowing that we got that lump sum coming in two months again that 51,000. so so by 2024 the heloc hit zero uh, but bef way before it hit zero like around you know 20 30 40k owed or whatever understand his interest cost is like nothing nothing so that's going to put him in a position where he says okay should i now start attacking my mortgage right his mortgage is like 900k and some change should i start going after that because his goal is to pay off debt. 
So if we go in that route, I'll say, okay, cool. We're going to work the math. Now, hopefully a year from now, rates come down. If his HELOC interest rate comes down, it's just going to make the conversation even more attractive in terms of moving portions of that amortized mortgage debt, which in his case, I believe it's around 4% and some change. So it's pretty low, 4 compared to 9%. But again, if 9 can become less than 2, then you have an argument because 4% amortized is not 4% amortized. It's more like 150%, 200% because you're paying double back in interest on that mortgage payment over the life uh, of that loan, right? So there's a lot of powerful moves that we can make here. And month to month, I'm evaluating, running the numbers with the people that I work with, seeing, okay, did your philosophy change? Are you Do you no longer want to pay off debt? Okay, you got the HELOC paid off in the car. Now it's just a mortgage. You now have a $300,000 line of credit at 9% that you know how to use and leverage and really only pay between 2 and 4%. Maybe you could leverage that and invest in another property or an asset as a you know, using that as your down payment on the next property. And maybe that generates an extra thousand dollars a month in cash or an extra $500 a month in cash flow. Or maybe you want to do some ministry work or maybe you want to do, you want to start a business brick and mortar. So you want to have those conversations along the way, right? So those of you who are watching this that want to be coaches, look at how I'm operating with the, the clients, look at what numbers I'm taking down, how I'm evaluating the math. Think about stuff that your client is not thinking about. The market, recession, inflation, taxation, you know, devaluation of the currency. Think about these different things that nobody really talks about and how it influences your client's decision-making process. All right? Be aware of what they're interested in. You know, I don't want to get blindsided by this client. One day he tells me, hey, I just threw a hundred thousand in Bitcoin. Why? Oh, well, you know, I want to, you know, invest too. That would be on my part I need to be able to extract that data in advance. And that's what I'm looking to do when I'm working with you guys is I, I want to know where do you stand, right? Do you want to do traditional method of paying off debt? Cool. Let's work together. Do you want to do advanced methods, velocity banking, infinite banking? Cool. Let's work together. Let's run those numbers. What you don't want to do for you watching that wants to pay off debt. Now, from client perspective, what you don't want to do to yourself is say you want to do this today and then tomorrow you have a new feeling and you want to do this and then you flip back to this feeling and then you flip again and you don't really find yourself getting out of debt. Right? You don't really find yourself making any progress. You're willy nilly trying to make things, you know, happen. That's, that's not, not ideal. Let's stick to a philosophy. Let's stick to a concept. Let's actually do the strategy, get results, and then look back six months, a year later and say, oh, I really like that. I enjoyed that. That was fun. Let's do it another six months, 12 months, go from there. And then you might get to a point where you're like, you know what? I, I feel like I, uh, I graduated from this concept of seven baby steps. I feel like I've, you know, I'm ready to go a little faster. I'm, you know, I, I'd like to leverage that. I don't want to be, I don't want to be in fear of debt anymore. I want to leverage. Okay, cool. Let's have a conversation. Let's work together. Click the link below. Excited to work with you. My name is Denzel Rodriguez, your personal finance geek of the 21st century. Let me give you one last look at the board here. This is the type of work I do all day long, running the numbers. This is what I love. Love this stuff. Okay. Click the links below. Check out my partners. Check out how to work with me. I got a lot of different options based on affordability. If you're negative cash flow, zero cash flow, paycheck to paycheck, backs against the wall, you don't know what to do. That's not an excuse to not reach out. Got a ministry of finance. It's free. Doesn't cost money, but it does cost effort, work, time, patience, discipline. If you have those things, we can work together. If not, you got to work on that. I can't you know, force you to be disciplined. You, you got to want that, right? Uh, I can only help guide and coach and show you the options how to move forward. So I hope you enjoyed this video. God bless. And we'll be talking soon.